Hey and welcome to this our video on order of operations. Now interestingly I think of operation lying on a hospital table with some random stranger slicing into me with a scalpel. Oh, now if that's not a mental image I don't need. But the good news is hospitals are awesome places to be, particularly if you're sick. But it's not that type of operation. It is a maths operation. Now those of you who are following out there in internet land, that is good to see you. Hey, welcome. How are you? Now, this course is actually following the Cambridge Essentials textbook over here in Australia. Yes, I have a British accent, but it's a changing British accent. But the good news is those of you who are watching this and are using the Cambridge Essentials textbook, these are awesome questions to do. But here we go. Welcome to the age-old dilemma of is it bid mass or bod mass or buffer de mass or anything else? Well, now, when I was at school, I was lucky enough to be taught Bid mass, not bod mass. Why? Well, <clears throat> we'll come back to that in a moment. However, the way a question is laid out can actually lead us to have different answers, unless you know the rules and the patterns in which maths is conducted. All right, so we need to make sure we are consistent in the way that we actually do mathematics. In this situation, we use what are called rules. So I like to highlight it with the following question. As I say, this question, 3 plus 5 times 6, can actually give us two different answers. And you're going to go, no, it really can't. It'll only give me one. Well, that's good. If you're actually saying that, the chances are you already know about bib mass, bod mass, or whatever else. But the two answers this could give me are 48 or 33. Now, you're going to say, hold on a moment. How can it give me 48 or 33? Well, yeah. Which one is correct? Well, sort of both of them. You think? If we put that into our calculation, calculator, then we'll actually end up with 48 as one of the answers and 33. And you're going to say, hold on a moment. What is this four function calculator? Well, when I was a kid, way back when dinosaurs roamed at the earth, this was the dream. Having that calculator there was the dream. I bet if you look in your mum and dad's drawers somewhere, you'll find one of those calculators, right? You show them your scientific calculator, they'll have some sort of mini conniption. They'll go, nope, don't know how to use it. They'll see the numbers, they can see the numbers here, but they won't have any idea what to do with all those scientific little square roots and squares and stuff, right? Because actually, when I was at school, you had to do it all by hand. You had to do everything by writing it out longhand. All those decimal places couldn't really be remembered. You had to write them all out. And the only thing it did was effectively four functions, plus, minus, times, and divide. By the time I got to, well, when was I school? 1970-something, 1980, early 1970s. These scientific calculators, I can remember my FX7, FX7. Right, mum and dad had to buy one for me. It cost a small fortune, and we needed it in math. And wow, did that change life! But these four function calculators actually will do maths in the way it's put. So if we go back to the question with three plus five times six, when you put that into your calculator, it will actually do the three plus five first, which gives you the eight, and then it will multiply that by six. Right, so that gave me 48 as my answer. These were also called left to right calculators in the sense that they move along the move along the sum from the left to the right. But luckily, scientific calculators use this bid mass, bod mass stuff. Now, here we go. Bod mass, as you all are no doubt aware, stands for brackets, other division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction, and that is the order in which you should do the operations. So where you see brackets in the question, you have to do those first. Then this other business. Now, I don't understand this other. I don't really get what other means. What do you mean other? Huh? What I, so I do brackets and then go make a cup of tea because that's other. I mean, it's not particularly mathematical, is it? And so this is why I like bid mass because we had brackets and then indices. All right. That's not indices, by the way. Anyone who's read that as indices, please leave the room now. 
Indices, basically, as I call them, floaty numbers. So anything with like an x squared or an x cubed, anything with a floaty number should be done next. And then division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. Now, by the time you get to an addition and subtraction, my advice to you is the questions, by the time you get down to there, will just go left to right. So when you add and subtract, just go from left to right. Do it as you would normally do. Because if I had 3 plus 4 minus 6, for example, you're going to do 3 plus 4 first, and then you're going to take away 6. You're going to move from left to right. All right? Please don't get all confused with bid mass. Possibly the most important thing here is the BID and the M. Bid them. So... Using bid mass means we'll actually get the answer of 33. Let's go back to that question again. 3 plus 5 times 6. So 3 plus 5 times 6. Brackets, there are no brackets. Indices, there are no indices. Division, there is no division, but there is multiplication. So I have to do the 5 times 6 first. And I, uh, it makes me slightly nervous because it's plus 5 times 6. But anyway, we do the 5 times 6 first, which is 30. Then you write down plus 3. Now, did you notice what I did there? The 30 was written directly below the 5 times 6, and then I just copied down in the same place the 3 and the plus. It fascinates me the number of people who will go 30 and then do plus 3 here. Please don't do that. Keep the order the same. And then because we just have addition, that makes 33 as my answer. We'll say correct answer. So here are some questions which use bid mass. Are the following statements true or False. All right. Is 5 times 2 plus 1 the same as 5 times 2 in brackets plus 1? Well, if we're going to use bid mass, well, what do we say? Let's just write it here. Brackets, indices, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. So looking at this side first, this 5 times 2 plus 1. Brackets, no. Indices, no. Division, no. Multiplication, yes. So 5 times 2 is 10. And we add the 1 on. Here, we've got brackets. That tells us to do the 5 times 2 plus 1. And yes, 10 plus 1 is equal to 10 plus 1. Thank you very much. So this one here, brackets. We have to do the brackets first. So let's call this question number 2. Brackets have to be done first. That's 7 times 10, which gives me 70. Is that equal to 10 times 3 plus 4? Well, brackets on this side, none, indices, none, division, none, multiplication. There we go. So we have to do the multiplication first which gives me 30, plus 4, which gives me 34. Is 70 the same as 34? No, and so I can actually put a line through my not equal to. Oh, that's interesting. Look, not equal to. Very helpful sign to have. Again, let's just do question number 3, and let's add this question number 1 here, because that's just going to be now question 4. 20 by one divide, uh, minus 7 divided by 7, brackets on this side. No indices, no division, yes. So we have to do 7 divided by 7 first, which is 1. So we have 21 minus 1, which is 20. What about this one here? Brackets have to be done first. 21 minus 7 is 14, which you then divide by 7, which gives us 2. Again, they are not equal. And finally, 7 minus 3 times 2 brackets. So we've got to do the multiplication first, which gives us 6. So 9 minus 6 is 3. And again, that's 9 minus 6, which gives me 3. And so in this situation, what did we decide? That would be true. False, false, and true. Now, maths is a big fat trick. Remember, big fat trick. And so, as such, we can use brackets inside of brackets inside of brackets. When I went to university, there were so many brackets, the question went over 27 pages. That's not true, by the way. So, when we have brackets inside of brackets, as we do in this question, do you notice? Now, I've used square brackets and curvy brackets. Now, square brackets and curvy brackets are just brackets. They mean exactly the same thing. It just is easier to read than if I had lots of brackets, all right? You might get confused. So, use square brackets and curvy brackets where you can. But, because I've got brackets inside of brackets, what I have to do is the bracket inside the bracket first. So, let's see. There's my big set of brackets, which means I have to do the 3 plus, well, that's the times, 3 plus 5 times 4 minus 1 first. So let's do that one first. So the brackets 3 plus 5 is 8 times 4 minus 1. Now, I'm going to continue to write the square brackets around because otherwise I start to change the sum. So 8 times 4 minus 1. Ooh, what's 8 times 4? 8, 16, 24, 32 minus 1 is 31. Then I've got three times. Now, I don't need these brackets anymore because I've actually worked out what's inside them. 
And so 3 times 31 is, in fact, 93. Thank you very much. Now, maths, while we do forwards, we can do backwards. As they always say, when you were at primary school, you were taught to count from 1 to 10, and then they had to count, teach you to count from 10 to 1. It, you, your brain doesn't automatically reverse things. It has to be shown how. All right, so what we can do forwards, we can do backwards. In many cases, we'll be given a question and the answer. So as you can see here, let's call this question number one. I've been given a question and an answer, and I've got to put brackets in to make the equation correct. Wow. Now, if I write this out long hand, 3 times 5 plus 6 times 4, 3 times 5 plus 6 times 4, and 3 times 5 plus 6 times 4, we can actually put brackets in three different places. Really? Look, 1, so the brackets could go around there, the brackets could go around there, or the brackets could go around there, which actually makes no sense at all. So, uh, realistically speaking, you're looking at these two examples here, this first one and the second one here. So, let's just see what happens when I do this first example. Well, 3 times 5 is 15. I'm going to add on 6 times 4, which is 6, 12, 18, 24. And that, in fact, gives me 39. So, there we go. I now can see that to make this question correct, that actually has to have the brackets around there. What happens here? Well, I have to do my brackets first. So I'm going to rub this out on the bottom because we've decided that's completely pointless. And maths is best done working down the page. So 5 plus 6 is 11. And then we get 3 times before and times by 4 afterwards. Now I can do that part of my multiplication first, which is ooh, 3 times ooh, 33 times that by 4. Well, 33 times 4 is, in fact, 132. And so in this situation, all I have to do is put my brackets around those middle two. Now, is it easy to be able to do these questions? Can I just look at them and be able to see automatically where the brackets have got to go? No. Right? Maths. As it gets more complicated, you have to do working out. And here is my working out. You should never expect in maths to be able to do this in your head, all right? Sorry, maths might be lazy, or mathematicians might be lazy, but we're not that lazy. We actually want to get to the correct answer. So, ladies and gentlemen, what did we talk about here? We talked about order of operations. Those of you who are watching this need to do those exercises if you are being taught by me. But otherwise, in internet land, have a great day. I look forward to seeing you again. It's been so great having you watch this video that I'd like to see you again and again and again. Wow, we could make some amazing maths together. So if you'd like to, and you'd like to be updated as to when I upload new videos, why not subscribe by clicking the button on the right? Otherwise, if you want to click and see another video created for this type of series, then click the video on the left. All right, well, you have an awesome day, and I look forward to seeing you again.